Welcome back to Movie Sin Podcast. I'm Summer. And I'm Lynn. And this is episode 13. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> I just thought of something. Do you watch the H3 podcast? No, um, I don't. Uh, like, I know what it is, but I don't actively, like, watch it. Yeah, I I love that podcast. I think it's so funny. And they're also, like, super, you know, they've been saying and mentioning a lot of stuff recently that needs oh, yeah, to be yeah, talked yeah. about. But anyway, so they have, like, these sound bites of uh, James Charles, who's been in the news a lot recently. And one of the sound bites is him saying, that's a little spook magoot. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that when he said, ooh, spooky. <laughs> It's just so funny. I'll have to send you a clip later. But um, anyway, (laughs) this is episode 13. Um, This is this episode's gonna be about friendships and family. Yeah, we just wanted to talk on, um, you know, certain things about friendship and family dynamics that maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, are similar for us or different for us on either side or compared with each other so i guess we sh- we can start off with like how our family dynamics are lynn do you want to start off with it or i can if you want no i can start it's cool so i guess for my immediate family i live currently with my mom my stepdad and my younger brother who well he's not here right now he's at school but like you know he's here when whenever Mm -hmm. and like a couple times a week my two of my stepdad's kids come over pretty often and stay they they're like here pretty often stay here sometimes so they're like I guess they're part of the household too like they're here enough where I would probably consider them part of the household Mm -hmm. I have four step siblings in total but uh one of them's like who's our age is like already moved out and stuff has her life together (laughs) <laughs> the other yeah. one is also away at school she's like the same age as my brother and then the other two uh they stay with their mom but they come here to like hang out with their dad and stuff I see my father sometimes I haven't seen him a lot the past year because of COVID but I have used to go over there to his place like every other weekend and I would see him sometimes during the week he would like take us to dinner after school and stuff but I've never like lived with him Mm -hmm. or anything I've only like been there for like certain periods of time well I mean obviously when they were together when I was like six years old I lived with him But, uh, like, after that, I've never, like, physically lived over there for, like, like actually, like, moved in and stuff. As I got older, though, I kind of, like, haven't, I didn't see him as much just because, you know, I'm, I was, like, working, busy with my own life, going to school and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's my, like, immediate family. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> that's a little spit <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> I need to stop. I'm going to start laughing so hard. But um, I currently live with my mom and dad. But I mean, that's my immediate family. (laughs) That's about Mm -hmm. it. I would consider myself an only child. I have, it's complicated. (laughs) But I have, I mean, what family isn't complicated? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if your family's not complicated, then there's something wrong with your family. Yeah. Like, if there's not something wrong with your family, you're not normal. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the normal, like, I really don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like all my friends, there's, like, some complication, you know? I think yeah. that's just normal. But anyway, I have two half-sisters. From your dad, right? From my dad, yeah. And then I have, it's hard to explain, but I have a stepsister as well, who's a half-sister of my two half-sisters. <laughs> So, like, I share a dad with my two half-sisters, right? Uh Uh-huh. But then they share the mom with their their other sister. So I consider her, like, my stepsister because we technically don't have any blood. Yeah, I was going to say there's no, like, blood relation, but you guys have, like, a relationship. Yeah, but I'm not very close with my sisters. Although, I mean, yeah, I'm not really close with them, but... I guess that's my immediate family. I really only consider my mom and dad as my immediate family, to be honest. 
Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Like, that's the only people you have, like, lived with consistently and, like, had a constant relationship with. Mm hmm. Yeah. I guess we can move on to, like, um, dynamics of the extended families. I guess I'll start with my dad's side first. So, my dad's side is the white American side. This is really awkward. This is, like, kind of hard to talk about because. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It, it we're ma- I feel like we're making it sound so boring, <laughs> but but like um, I I do have like cousins on my dad's side and stuff, but they're all like way older than me, um, because my dad's the youngest. He has three sisters, and I call my grandma like his mom pretty often nowadays, just because like I haven't been able to see her because of COVID mm-hmm. for a while. So, like, I, I talk to her pretty often now, actually, in comparison to, like, before. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Especially because my, uh, my grandfather passed away a couple years ago. So, mm-hmm. so I only really call her now because, like, you know, before I would, like, talk to both of them. Um, mm-hmm. So I think my dad's oldest sister is probably who I talk to the most mm-hmm. on that side because she lives down with my grandma, so it's, like, we stay with her when we go visit her and stuff like that and you know love her and probably her two kids because they actually used to live like pretty close to us like distance wise so we would go to like th- their house for Thanksgiving every year and stuff like that and her daughter my cousin she lived like 20 minutes away from my university in undergrad so I would like go over there and dog sit for her and stuff like that once in a while. So I was able to see her more than what I used to back then mm-hmm. when I was an undergrad. My dad's other two sisters I don't see as often because they like live in Minnesota. And like so I don't see those cousins that often. Mm-hmm. Just because of like distance. And then also the added thing of like not living with him. So we wouldn't like I would I just. It, the fact is just that I didn't see that side of the family as much and they're all like a bit older you know yeah so I I didn't have like a closer relationship with them besides like when I was younger that maybe they'd like babysit me and stuff like that but yeah on my mom's side which is the Vietnamese side I, I mentioned it before I think in like our first episode actually that my mom has 11 siblings so I have a lot of cousins on that side (laughs) most of like the majority of them live all in the same area we live in so we are pretty close because they have kind of like a consistent cascading I guess age group so like the oldest cousins on that side are like in their mid 30s I think mid or almost late 30s and then the youngest ones are in high school so there's, mm-hmm. like, a pretty long range because there's, like, 12 of them total. So, like, obviously there's going to be, like, a long range of, like, cousins, like, their right. kids' ages. And we're all, like, really close just because I feel like that's just a big culture thing for us is, like, our parents are all close and we visit each other a lot. So we're all close. And mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. Like, I actually talk to my cousins on that side about this sometimes. It feels like we're not cousins. It feels mm-hmm. like we are siblings, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that we're all friends and stuff like that, too. And it's, like, crazy because sometimes we think about, like, I think one of my cousins said it's weird that sometimes I think I don't have friends when I realize, like, like our cousins are our friends. Mm-hmm. Like, we hang, out, we hang out with each other and, do, and, like, talk to each other a lot like that. So it's, like, at first it was kind of weird because we were just, like, well, like, our cousins are our friends. I don't know how common that is for a lot of people. I've never really met anyone else in recent memory that has that same kind of relationship with their cousins Mm -hmm. as that. So I think it's pretty cool that like, especially with how many of us there are, that we're all able to like be close like that. Yeah, that is cool. I don't have that for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's like the rundown on the extended family for me. Yeah, that's so nice that you uh, that you're close with your cousins. Yeah, I, I mean, really I think sweet. part of it is like a lot of us are 
close in age. There's kind of like groups of us, like some of us are like those that are between 20 and 30 and those that are 30 plus, but like, it's not really a divide in that way. Like we all interact with each other, especially because I think the older cousins used to babysit us a mm-hmm. lot and stuff like that. And we all like grew up together and stuff. So I think that's like part of the relationship too, is like, we've just always grown up together instead mm-hmm. of like being cousins that you only see once a year or once every other year or like mm-hmm. only family reunions, you know? So it's just like, cause we, literally did grow up together and would always be at each other's houses and stuff I think is a big reason why it's like that yeah that's so nice do you have a lot of cousins I do and I'm not very close with most of them (laughs) (laughs) um so my dad's side of the family which is larger well honestly I don't know if it's larger it seems larger but it's I think there's like actually a lot of people on my mom's side of the family I forget about but Mm -hmm. I'm not very close with that side of the family, and neither is my dad, really. You know, it's not just, like, me. My dad just isn't really close with them. So I didn't really know them, or... Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of, like, distant relatives, (laughs) to be honest. Right. Um, Both of my grandparents on my, my dad's side have passed away, so I don't really... I don't know. I They were kind of, like, the connecting factor for me. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I really cared for them and they really loved me too. Um, but I, since they've passed, I don't really feel like connected with that side of the family anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. One person that I am really close with, though, on my dad's side is my aunt and, or one of my aunts, but um, she is the best. I love her so much. She, we're very close. Like, I love her. A She's lot. the cool aunt. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> I wasn't, it's weird, uh, we weren't very close when I was younger because I think, you know, the distance of living in Japan and she was living in the United States, it's like mm-hmm. hard to stay connected, really. Right. But like once we moved back here, we really got close and we've just been like, we see each other as much as we can it's hard during the pandemic though we haven't seen each other for a while due to that but like mm-hmm. before that we would you know see each other pretty often spend holidays together um and yeah she's she's the best and then on my mom's side um I just have my grandma Bachan. <laughs> shout out to Bachan. shout out to Bachan. she gave me these cheekbones that I have <laughs> You do have those high Chrissy Teigen <laughs> cheekbones. Thank you. <laughs> the ultimate compliment. <laughs> but yeah, she is the best. I love her very much. I was definitely closer with my grandparents on my mom's side than I was on my dad's side, but I love them. I, I loved all of them. Um, mm-hmm. And they loved me too. I never felt like unloved I guess <laughs> mm-hmm. um they definitely cared for me but yeah I have my grandma and then I have my I have two cousins one's our age he's like a month younger than me and then um I have another cousin who's like a couple of years younger than me so are you the oldest cousin yeah on my mom's side on your mom's side yeah on my dad's side, I'm the youngest cousin. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the oldest on my mom's side. But I'm trying to think. There's so much more family, though. Like, my mom has cousins who have cousins mm-hmm. who have cousins. And we see them all the time when we have, whenever we go over there, you know. Yeah, I totally didn't even mention, like, because a lot of my mom's cousins are also here. Yeah, and stuff like that or like that kind of extended family and they were like I don't think we're like close to them but Mm -hmm. definitely closer than like I feel like other families like I would know I could point them out to you like I know Mm -hmm. who they are and I know like something about their lives and like how they're related to me (laughs) like they're not complete strangers so I'm just like hey I guess we're related you know yeah so that's cool 
Yeah, I, I really enjoy visiting all the family, even though I don't know them very well. I, I Whenever we hang out with them and stuff, mm -hmm. I feel like I I know them very well after a short amount of time. And like me and my extended, because I don't even know what to call them, I guess second or third cousins, we would just like go hang out and go to like a fair or something and like watch fireworks in the summertime. So, so it, I definitely feel closer to the family on my mom's side. If we're counting the number of people, I guess. But yeah, I feel like that's like partially a culture thing almost. Yeah, maybe for so. us, because like, I mean, I know at least for us, like extended family, um, is pretty is still like important. Like, yeah, it's it's kind of weird to me to think about like, it's technically your parents' immediate family, so why wouldn't it be also your immediate family in that sense? you know yeah. but but that's just how it feels for me mm -hmm. I totally forgot to mention well you kind of reminded me of it when you brought up uh Ba Chen <laughs> that my mom's parents are both like well my grandpa he's 91 oh wow yeah he's old <laughs> and my grandma is like I think she's gonna be 89 or 90 here soon Wow. Like they're both they're both pretty old. But it made me think just like I don't I'm not close to them because I have a language barrier with them. Like I mm. can't even though like when I was younger I used to be there all the time and I probably used to be able to talk to them when I was really young. But like as I got older I I wasn't able to talk to them. Mm. And like nowadays I, I like don't I can't talk to them. So I feel like I'm not even though I see them often, I'm not that actually close to them because I can't really talk to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. I feel like that's, like, kind of common for mixed people, too. Like, if you lose, if one of your um, sides is, like, the main language is not English, and if you, like, grow up in an English-speaking country, it can be pretty easy. Like, if you're living in like an english-speaking household and you don't keep up mm -hmm. with the other language like you might not be able to communicate with people on that side of the family yeah sometimes it makes me sad but like it kind of is what it is you know yeah it's it's hard not to like fault yourself a little bit i but you can't control the circumstances like a lot of language especially like from when you're younger is like use it or lose it mm -hmm. so in a way like not saying that I can't like go back and try to study it you know but if you think of the context of like you don't you go to like you live in an English-speaking country your immediate family like your immediate unit so like your parents speak English to you because my mom and my dad both spoke English to each other and to me for the most part. And you go to like English speaking school, you don't get any of the input of the other language and stuff, you're not gonna retain it or anything. So and like when you're a kid, you don't have control over that environment, right? Yeah. A lot of people and I've seen like memes of this too, where like the parents even of like monoracial Asians, if the parents aren't speaking to them in the language and then they get mad at the kid for not knowing the language but it's like if they can't if they're not getting the input how are they gonna know yeah. you know so it's not like it's not like a hundred percent the kid's fault and especially like in general it's never really the kid's fault because there's a lot of social pressure to like speak English only or mm -hmm. like reject the other language there's a lot of social pressure and stuff like that so the language retention in that part when you lose it it's kind of hard you do get I feel like a lot of people they can't speak to parts of their family because of a language barrier like mm -hmm. they feel like it, it's their fault but it's not really their fault even though you can like when you're older you do have like autonomy to go back and learn it's never going to be like the same you know yeah 
I totally so get that. anyone listening that doesn't speak like a language on one side, don't fault yourself too much. <laughs> yeah, I, it's yeah. a pro- you're a product of your environment. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was growing up, and my grandparents would say, "Oh, we don't." They would say it in Japanese, but they they would they would be like, "Oh, we don't know English very well, so we gotta learn Japanese," which mm-hmm. is true. I mean, they knew very basic English. I mean, my grandfather, Ji-chan, <laughs> he would try to learn. He was very interested in English, and he always wanted to learn more. So he he knew actually quite a bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, he couldn't really hold a conversation. He just knew, like, words here and there. But mm-hmm. um, I just remember they would they would say that, especially my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was lucky enough to live there for such a long time and grow up hearing it all the time. Mm-hmm. But it definitely was tough when you go to school, like, where you only hear English. And then because my dad doesn't know Japanese, you only mm-hmm. hear your parents speak English to each other. But my mom would, you know, she would try to speak to me in Japanese mm-hmm. Um and of course, if we went, I didn't live on the military base, so we lived in, like I said before, like kind of the suburbs, mm-hmm. kind of countryside of Japan. So if you went to the grocery store, you would only hear Japanese, you know, there wouldn't be really any English. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really lucky to grow up in that kind of an environment where I could learn and absorb it yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't too difficult for me to communicate with my grandparents. Although sometimes I wouldn't know, you know, what, what they're yeah. saying. Mm-hmm. And I'm still learning all the time. Yeah. That reminds me, like, what you said about your uh, your grandfather. Like, I just remembered that, like, my mom's dad, so my, my grandpa there, he can, like, mm-hmm. read the newspaper in English. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen him do it, and I mm-hmm. thought he was... <laughs> I was really embarrassed because one time I asked my mom, I was like, is he just like staring at the newspaper? And she's like, no, you dumbass, he could read. Oh. <laughs> well, I felt so dumb because I was, it just didn't occur to me that he could like read English. Mm hmm. Because I'd just never seen him do it. I knew he knew like some words and like if you gave him enough time, he could, um, we could probably talk. In English, if he if we if he had like a ton of time to like form sentences and stuff, mm-hmm. but yeah. I don't know I because like I didn't spend too much time like specifically interacting with him. I just didn't know he could read English, mm-hmm. and then I just felt like such a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, so "What funny. is he doing with the newspaper?" <laughs> Your mom was like reading. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Oh yeah it was pretty funny after <laughs> it was um yeah I mean I know enough to like talk to them like if they're I can ask like how they're doing and yeah. like if they need help for me to like go turn on or off the light somewhere get them certain things like around the house because they're like pretty old so it's kind of hard for them to move around yeah so like I can understand like that kind of stuff and I can understand when they're asking me like you know how's school going right and I'm like good (laughs) school's fine (laughs) and that's like the extent I feel like a lot I feel like they know what's going on in my life because my mom will tell them yeah and like I know when they're like praising me or saying like like whatever they're saying like I can kind of understand like what they're talking about vaguely but I can't like really communicate with them so yeah it's kind of like um just for anyone out there that is curious about language retention and bilingualism uh babies don't get confused between two languages there's no like confusion there right that's I feel like that's a lot of especially people our parents age a lot of the research back then wasn't good and it would say like only speak to your baby in one language yeah so it would end up being English but babies don't get confused uh, for babies to retain language, they need at least 25% of the time to have input. So a baby can learn, like, up to four languages as a as a baby, like, natively. Because oh they only need, like, 25% of 
of the time as input from the language. That's amazing. So, yeah, babies are kind of whack. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. I mean, babies yeah. are pretty smart with language and stuff, but you have to start early because, like, I think after nine, t- t- between six and nine months, there's a uh, a drop in like what phonemes so like what sounds of a language they can discern so like if they're not hearing them constantly after six to nine months like in their first six to nine months of life they Mm -hmm. like will stop being able to recognize them Mm -hmm. so you have to start early of like getting language input in there I'll I'll remember that when I have a child (laughs) yeah I feel like if I ever have children I'm definitely gonna be like mom only talk to my child in Vietnamese yeah <laughs> please <laughs> save save them from me <laughs> <laughs> yeah anywho did you have anything else you wanted to say about your family nah. <laughs> not really I just um no. I mean, I really wish I could be physically closer to my family in Japan because I really yeah. like spending time with them and I miss them a lot. Yeah, that makes um, sense because, like, if your formative years were over there and you were spending a lot of time with them during that time. You know. Yeah, I also just miss the country, too, oh. um, a lot right now. But it's I like... miss somewhere I've never even been. <laughs> I miss your grandparents, too. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so... I mean, of course I love it because I grew up there. So it's that's like the mothership, you know, for me. The mothership. (laughs) (laughs) That's the homepage. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, of course, the people make it really sentimental. I I really miss my cousins and my, my uncle and all of our family my grandmother of course so I just can't Mm -hmm. wait to be able to safely go back and see everybody yeah are you able to like video call them and stuff or is the time difference too like it's too is it too much no I mean it's not crazy it's just night there when it's morning here so Mm -hmm. um it's not a big deal you can find a good time yeah so like I actually talk to my grandma once a week um on zoom so (laughs) yeah she lives in like a home so mm-hmm. that people can take care of her because oh, it just yeah yeah it's a good thing but they have like an ipad and they like set it up for her every <laughs> sunday <laughs> That's so um, cute. <laughs> yeah and she like um i don't think she understands the concept of headphones or earbuds because <laughs> like when she was wearing it she was like because we ask her like how um, how it is living in in the home, and we're like, oh, what do you do? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And then she she thinks I think she thinks like the like the caretakers that are sitting next to her that they can hear what we're saying, <laughs> but they can't. She was like, what do you mean you can't? <laughs> they can't hear what I'm saying. It's just really cute, and it was really <laughs> funny. But yeah, I get to I get to talk to her once a week and my uncle and my uh, my aunt in law and my cousins. Mm-hmm. Um, so we all hop on a Zoom and like talk to each other. So Aww, I'm really good. thankful that we get to do that. I'm kind of surprised at that your grandma is in like a place with caretakers and stuff because I know like not just like in our families but like in Asia and stuff in general like that's not really a thing yeah so I'm kind of surprised well it's because she has Alzheimer's so it's like okay I think we if she didn't we definitely would have just let her live at home Mm -hmm. because um that's her space you know like that yeah I totally get that but no that makes sense like she definitely needs people there in case yeah it's just like you know simple things like cooking on a stove or like yeah, I don't know, taking a bath. It's just stuff like that that like can turn dangerous or even deadly. So it just seemed like the best idea. And like, you know, we're living here in the United States and my uncle, he 
just moved to Tokyo, actually. He was living in Hiroshima, mm -hmm. but he just got transferred to Tokyo for his job. So it's yeah, like... Yeah, so there wouldn't be, like, someone at home really able to take care of her. Yeah, exactly. It's just, like, it, it was the best option. Yeah, that's for... the same way with, like, my dad's mom. Mm -hmm. She has uh, Parkinson's, so that's, like a related disease to Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff, but it, like, mm -hmm. also attacks the nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, so she can't... Even her and my grandfather actually moved into the same facility because they had, like, separate room in separate areas for people able to, like, do things and stuff. My grandma, mm -hmm. she can't... Right. She, my grandma can't really move very well mm -hmm. because it's, like, attacked her nerves and stuff. So she needs, like... And people can't provide for her. Like, even, like, my... Uh, some of my aunts and uncles, like, if they, even if they moved in with her, they wouldn't be able to provide, like, the care that she needs. Yeah. For medication and, like, or, or for anything like that, because she needs someone to really be there with her to take care of her, like, because she can't get up by herself and stuff like that a lot. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's not doable for someone who's not a professional to keep yeah. up with, like, her medication, her therapy and all that stuff, so it was just a net benefit for her to be in a home. Yeah. And, like, we just tried to visit her as much as possible and stuff like that to, like, spend time with her. Yeah. So I think I kind of agree with that sentiment because I, I feel like – I think this is actually kind of a stereotype, though. I just know that a lot of Asian families, they'll say, like, you better not put me in a home like the American people do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah. I, in a way I kind of agree with that like I don't think I would put my my mom's parents still live with like one of my aunts because they mm -hmm. can still like do things by themselves and stuff yeah like they don't need I feel like it's a, a home is like if they need care you can't provide but I think there's like an expectation in a lot of Asian cultures that like your parents will move back in with you when they're really old yeah it's not just, I don't think it's just a stereotype. I actually think it's very true. Like, the extended family is kind of like your immediate family, you know? Right. I remember when I was growing up in Japan, the people that we were renting the house from, they lived right next door. But they lived mm -hmm. on sort of like a compound, kind of, mm -hmm. that like consisted of two houses. So one was for like, the son and his family and then the mm -hmm. other house was like the main house that the the elders lived in and mm -hmm. so it was it was just like a compound basically but they like live together they cook together yeah I've seen that yeah I mean it's very I don't think you'd really see that here very often anyway I know mm -hmm. that that's possible but I don't think that's very common here in the United States, but I, I think it is very common in Asia. Yeah, I think, like, the closest concept there is is, like, an in-law suite, but that's, like, if they're just staying for an extended period of time yeah. and not, like, living. But I know yeah. what you're talking about, where, like, land that has multiple areas that are, like, private, except for, like, big areas, like, cooking areas and stuff like that, where you guys will, yeah. like, join together. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they would just, like, it was the uh, grandparents' property, and they were just living in the main house mm -hmm. and they just like and they had like extended family that was living with them too and like it was just very different family dynamic it's just like I said it's just like your your extended family is your immediate family mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> which I kind of like honestly I think it's really nice it's nice to have like a, a big support system like yeah, that. I I don't know about living that close, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would. You know that that's a little. It depends, much, but I think that's just because I grew up here, so that like idea is just a little bit more foreign to me of like living on the same property. Yeah, I I think I would be fine with it. Like once my parents got older you know like I would yeah. if I wanted to look after them mm -hmm. I would I think I would definitely like something like that so I could just you know walk over and say yeah. hey how are you guys doing let's have dinner tonight and then just check up on how they're doing yeah I definitely think I feel like that's going to be a growing thing for like people who live like in America who are Asian mm -hmm. is trying to find something like that where they'll still have 
privacy um yeah. like basically of like their own house but like their parents who are older live in the same very close area or like have a separate area on mm-hmm. the same property or something I feel like it's gonna be hard to find but that would probably be ideal I feel like like having an in-law suite but like but better yeah like <laughs> separate oh, yeah, I know it's definitely. gonna be like expensive but like <laughs> I feel like that would be an easier way to bring something like that up here yeah like in America than like having them move back in with you that's yeah. like expected in a way you know I yeah because I can see like how that I've I've seen how that can like that can really push some boundaries and like y- people need their privacy you know mm-hmm. and like especially um, as adults yeah and I think it would be good to have your own separate living spaces that you don't have to like where you don't have to pass through yeah each other's spaces like like I, separate but accessible exactly yeah but I don't think that's very common here yet yeah if anyone's making like a planned development area that would be a a snazzy idea <laughs> yeah I actually watched um House Hunters Hawaii or something like that uh-huh. Hawaii life because I love Hawaii it's so pretty but there was this one house that they looked at and it had it had three floors and the top two floors were like the main house and then the bottom floor was called I think I don't remember what the word was some Hawaiian word it might have been like um ohana or something like that mm-hmm. but anyway um it was just like a in-law suite at the bottom of the house mm-hmm. um and it was totally separate like they didn't have to like pass through each other's parts of the home Mm -hmm. they had their own kitchen and stuff like that I think I'd be okay with that too eventually (laughs) yeah but I don't know it depends it yeah I mean everyone's situation obviously is different and like but I think there is that expectation to like your parents move back in when you're older but I've never heard of that like I've never heard of that expectation for like from like any of my white friends yeah like they're always just like you know they're gonna live by themselves until they're old and I'm just like but what if they get really old like what are you gonna do yeah I don't know it's just like I I also have this feeling like I want to help them because they raised me Mm -hmm. and I'm now it's my turn to take care of them Mm -hmm. and I just want to do that but I also think it, de- like I said, it depends though, because I said about my grandma, like if there's something, or like your grandparents, sometimes they need care that you can't provide, and it's okay mm-hmm. to, if you are not the one who can provide that care. Yeah, of course. So there's nothing wrong with that, whether mm-hmm. you're like Asian or white, like there's nothing yeah. wrong with that, you know? You got to do what's best for your family mm-hmm. and for that. Yeah. You know? I agree though. Speaking of friends, maybe we should move on to that. (laughs) I feel like this is loosely related to dating and the fact that we're going to talk about preferences. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Preferences of friends. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I guess, like, it's going to sound stupid if you're just like, what do you look for in a friend? Because, like, (laughs) I mean, I don't really. Everyone wants, like, a friend with good friend qualities. Yeah, I mean. At least I think so, right? Well, I don't know. Like, when I first moved here to the United States after living in Japan, it was really hard for me to find friends Mm -hmm. because I was having such big culture shock and I didn't know, like, how to act. And, like, public school here is so different from, like, school, the school that I went to in Japan. Mm-hmm. even though it was on a military base and it was like you know American kids were going to the school it was just so yeah. different it's still different yeah yeah it's it's crazy I like I never saw anyone really get into a fight until like moved here <laughs> <laughs> and like I never really saw or like yeah I, I never really saw kids get in serious trouble until I moved here like with law enforcement getting involved Like, Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in one of my eighth grade science classes and, like, this kid got removed from the class, like, arrested because he had drugs in his locker. 
amazing. Yeah, I, I was just like, whoa, what the heck? Like, I, I can't imagine that happening at the school that I went to. Uh-huh. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, so I had a hard time finding friends. So I really, at that point, I was like, I just want a friend. Mm-hmm. I don't really care who it is. And I never really cared who they were anyway. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've always had a really diverse friend group. Mm-hmm. Not that I pick and choose people because of that, <laughs> you know. But I definitely have felt like if I if somebody I notice that somebody's like half or mixed, I I feel like it's easier to become friends with them because you right. can relate in so many ways. Mm-hmm. So I have I have quite a few friends who are half. Yeah, I guess that's like how we became friends too, though. Yeah, our halfy radar went off. Yeah, we were like, oh, hello. <laughs> She's a happy. I sense you. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean we immediately were like, oh, she's going to be my best friend. Just no, we didn't she's talk a for a while. Like, no, we didn't. We, didn't. we yeah. didn't become like friend friends for a while. Yeah, I mean, it didn't help that we're both kind of antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like, oh, I don't know how to interact <laughs> yeah like just a co-worker <laughs> yeah no I totally agree I think when I was I feel like I had you know a semi-similar experience to you in the sense that like when I changed from like private school to public school I did talk about the culture shock from that mm-hmm. it's obviously not the same as your culture shock like yours is like a way different kind of change yeah, but it's still a shock, though, you know? It's totally yeah, it different was, for you. Yeah, it was definitely a shock. <laughs> yeah. And, like, because I changed schools a lot of times, I, like, would gravitate towards, like, a lot of different kinds of people. So, like, yeah. I think you're right about, like, kind of gravitating towards other halfies. And, like, for me personally, other Asians in general, mm-hmm. like, not just halfies because the school a lot of those private schools I went to were like obviously majority white and the high school I went to that was the public school was it was still majority white but definitely not as there was it was actually like pretty diverse Mm -hmm. in comparison especially to like the other schools I went to so I felt way more I felt like way stronger friendships with like the other Asians and other halfies I met at the public school because I could actually relate to them in like experience Mm -hmm. in life and stuff like that and like culture compared to some of the other schools because in the other schools there weren't a lot of halfies a lot of the like one of my really close friends that I was friends with for a really long time they were uh full Asian and Mm -hmm. then like when I was younger there weren't really any so I was like friends with a lot of the just whoever and I didn't, I think I was like you, I didn't actively seek out, like, other happies or other Asians at, in general, but it was just, like, who I felt connected with and who welcomed me. Yeah. You know? hmm And I think that's, like, you know, something that when you share experience with people, that's, like, what can you can connect with and stuff. Yeah, so I, I think mean... that's why nowadays I'm, like, like, that's why we became close. That's yeah. why... Like, some of the people I got close with in, like, college and stuff are other halfies and stuff like that, too. Yeah, I agree. And, like, I, it's just, like, when you see, like, a large group of people who are of the same race, like, and eth- or ethnicity, and mm-hmm. they're just, like, they're hanging out together, and you might question why they don't hang out with anybody else. So it might just be because they feel really comfortable with people that are of the same race or ethnicity. Yeah, because there's, like, a lot of shared experience and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And, like, you can relate a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Like, I think it's totally okay to be friends with people that are of the same race or ethnicity. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's okay to shut people out. No. If they're of a different race or ethnicity just because you're like, oh, I just, like, no, that's that's racist (laughs) yeah if you're shutting them out like on purpose like maybe you guys just don't vibe 
or like that that person is not open to learning about your guys as as a group yeah you know but it goes like both ways like don't shun them out and like if you're being if you're joining a group of people like don't be a dick you know just be kind you don't have to be friends with everybody but um, yeah but I don't know just don't do that (laughs) like don't shut somebody out just because they're not the same as you yeah don't shut anybody out and don't shut other people down yeah new motto (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but yeah I would say now I think it sounds dumb but I think my the person like well actually that's not dumb retract (laughs) (laughs) the person I was just gonna say like who I was closest to like mm-hmm. as a friend and honestly it, it is like my significant other but like that's a different kind of closeness so like yeah that's not <laughs> yeah so that doesn't really count that's like a different kind of best friend like your significant, yeah. significant other should be your best friend yeah but like non-significant other best friend I actually would probably say like you're pretty up there yeah oh my gosh ew yeah, you, my friend Valerie, who's also another happy. <laughs> yeah, one of my other friends who's a happy Luna. She's like my best friend too. <laughs> yeah, um, but I do have my friend. I won't say her name. Mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if she would care or not. I don't think she would. But mm-hmm. she's she's not half. She's just she's white. <laughs> mm-hmm. But she is one of my best friends too. I don't know. I have so many good friends. I'm so blessed, to be honest. But yeah. Um, But I do have a lot of friends, though, that are half halfies. Yeah. I think, I don't think I have more friends that are halfies. I'm, like, looking through (laughs) my, like, who my recent chats are. Like, (laughs) I I mean, I just, like I said, I don't want to sound like some diversity inclusion section part of your company you know like I don't want to sound like oh my god we're so diverse but I really like when I think about all my friends I I do think I'm just I like people that are nice to me and care about me and that Mm -hmm. and that I care about with and we can laugh together and it doesn't really matter like I I don't know I I can feel close to somebody who's not necessarily happy you know Mm mm-hmm I yeah. do have a pretty diverse friend group. Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking like through my recent chats, and I think most of my friends are halfies or Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Not, but like uh, a lot of my friends, like in school too, are um, like in my current program. Like the people I'm closest to, I think, are like West Asian mm-hmm. too. So, still mostly. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it, for me, it goes back to, like, who I vibe with the most. Yeah. You know? And it just happens to be like that. But, like, I don't go out of my way to, like, not talk to other people. (laughs) Yeah, no, you're... (laughs) You know? If you're a kind person, you would never shut somebody out. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. But no, seriously, you would never shut anybody out just because they're not like halfy or Asian, you know? No. Like, that's called racism, and you're not. <laughs> you're not... We don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. You don't do that. Like that's just. I don't know. I'm not friends with anybody who would do that. You know, like that's yeah. just fucked up. You don't need people like that in your life. No, and if you have somebody like that in your life, you need to drop them real quick and reevaluate. Yeah, find people like me and Summer in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, like it's tough. I've I've definitely felt like at times it's really tough to find really good friends that mm-hmm. will do anything for you and like actually care about you and do the same for you, like as you would for them. Right. Hold on to those friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Even if you grow like far apart or like, you know, li- lives go on. Like I'm experiencing this right now. Like my best friend, um, she's a happy, and we we just grew up, and we were we were really close friends growing up. But she lives in um, 
the West Coast now. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's harder to stay connected, but you got to hang on to those good friends, you know? Yeah. Because they're very, it seems like, to me anyway, that they can be few and far between and you can't replace somebody like that. Right. I low-key was afraid of that, like, when we stopped, when I stopped working at the company that we used to work at before. So I was like, it was also hard because it was during the time of I stopped, like, um, I, I think I talked about this last week or whatever but like Mm -hmm. it was in the middle of covid that i stopped working there yeah so i was already not seeing you guys like the team we worked on yeah at all for like a couple months and then like after leaving like i only i haven't really kept up with anyone else besides you and our other coworker we're close with Mm -hmm. so i was like i really wanted to I'm glad, like, all three of us have kept that, like, line of communication open. Yeah. Because I was, like, I was going to be really sad if I left and then I was, like, not talking to you guys anymore. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. No, same. I was worried about that, too, because I don't know how people feel when they, I don't know, you know, like, people change and they're, like, oh, they move on with their lives. And I totally get that. It's totally okay. It happens. Yeah. Also, because, like, I knew people that left that company, like, while I was still there. And I was like, oh, you know, keep in touch. And then you you don't. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Like, even if you were kind of close to them, like, you just, it just happens. Yeah. 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 That just reminds me of, like, um, signing new books in (laughs) middle school. You write hags. I was just going to say that. Hags. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great summer. Oh, my gosh. Hags and, like hags and kit and then like <laughs> sometimes if they left you would just never see them again especially like when we were kids like you didn't have like phones and social media like if they were yeah. gone they were just gone yeah exactly <laughs> never to be seen again <laughs> where are they now <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh so sweet though i'm glad we became close you know yeah. I had a good feeling about you. <laughs> yeah. The the radar doesn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. You can just tell. Yeah, and some people you can just tell. Yeah, sometimes you can't tell and you're like, oh wow, this person turned into something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because it just happens where... You have, uh, I don't know if we want to talk about this, but it sometimes you become friends with someone and they change, or you like you didn't know who they really were, mm-hmm. and like it becomes toxic and it can be tough to leave a friendship. Yeah, um, but I think the best advice for people in that position is if you feel like something's not right don't ignore it like something is probably not right so you either have to try to work it out or leave the friendship even though it sucks and it's easier said than done but like it's very freeing when you leave something like that yeah yeah and then you can like especially if it's like a really toxic one and this goes for relationships too best Mm -hmm. way to get over it is to immediately do something they wouldn't ever like quote unquote let you do that you couldn't mm-hmm. do when you were friends or um, in a relationship with them. It's very freeing and it feels like you're spiting them. So it feels good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get out of that shit. <laughs> yeah. Do toxic. what's best for you, boo boo. Yeah. And just trust your gut. It. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You're probably right from the way you're feeling. Yeah. You know yourself. Yeah. And if you're unsure, you can talk about it with another friend or with that friend and see how it goes. Or you can email us at moviesandpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll reply to you. Oh my gosh, it's like one of those like newspaper columns. Yeah, we'll be your... Uh, dear Movie Send. <laughs> what is it, like Dear Annie or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, if you send yeah. us an email, we'll give you our advice. You can't guarantee it's going to be great advice, but yeah, not we'll that give we've advice. had 
yeah i mean like we i feel like we've we've experienced i think we're pretty mature <laughs> that makes us sound like we're not mature <laughs> i'm mature we're so, we're so, <laughs> i'm mature okay, i fold definitely... my own clothes i mean we there's always there's always more to learn Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm. I, there's always more to learn, and I feel like we've learned a lot just from when we began this podcast to now. Mm-hmm. So, agree. Email us, and we'll learn more from you. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, you can catch us every other Wednesday, anywhere you stream podcasts, and our YouTube channel. And we're recording this the day after Easter, so happy spring. Hope your weather is getting warmer. And yep. we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.